Hello, chart watchers, and welcome to this Tuesday, September 17th, 2019 Market Watchers Live show with your host, Tom Boley. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show, and for our regulars, welcome back. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market today. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average off its earlier lows, but still down 25 points. The S&P 500 was down a little bit earlier, but it has uh, rallied. Well, I'm not sure we want to call it a rally, but it's up one point. Sitting near that 3,000 level, 2,999. The NASDAQ up seven points, so it is outperforming slightly on a relative basis while we're seeing a little bit of weakness here in the Russell 2000. But you can see the Russell 2000 has climbed back up to its high late August, or excuse me, late July, early August. And when you look across the board, we're not quite seeing that on the other indices. So we're beginning to see a little bit of relative strength in the uh, small cap Russell 2000, which is good news. The 10 year Treasury yield has uh, Pulled back a little bit here. It's down four basis points, 1.80%. Not great news there ahead of the Fed. Volatility index uh, back on the rise a little bit, but still the overall trend I would say here is down and it does remain at a much lower level than where we saw it throughout much of August, uh, currently down around 14 and three quarters. Leading to the upside, defensive stocks. This is not at all surprising to me with the Fed on deck. Uh, we'll be getting the policy statement from the Fed tomorrow. And uh, you can see real estate leading, utilities having a nice day, staples potentially putting in a bottoming um, a bullish engulfing candle there. That could be a reversal. Restaurants and bars. I wanted to point out these next five industry groups because these are areas of the market that had been leaders that had struggled, especially uh, you know as we started September. And you can see restaurants and bars coming back uh, today, having a pretty good day, although I'm not sure that group is out of the woods. Um, Non-durable household products, also trying to hold on to support, some support over the last three or four weeks, bouncing, although off of its earlier high. Renewable energy really having a nice day, though, breaking out of what looked to me like a very bullish symmetrical triangle, where the highs continue to move lower, the lows continue to move higher, and all of that came after an uptrend. So that is a continuation pattern where you look for a breakout, and it looks like we're getting a really nice one here on the renewable energy space. So that's one thing certainly to take note of today. Specialty finance coming back up, trying to get back above its uh, moving average, both of its moving averages. We'll see whether or not we can continue. We do still have an uptrend in play here. Medical equipment, uh, it's been pretty volatile in September, broke to a new high in early September, uh, looked like it was falling apart two days later, came roaring back, tested highs, pulling back. Well, today it's back up again up uh, almost 1% on the day, medical equipment having a pretty good day. And then in the restaurant and bar space, I noticed there were only two stocks, at least as of about 15 minutes ago, there were only two stocks in the Dow up more than 1%. McDonald's was one of them. So McDonald's coming back up, but you can see it just broke down below this 210 level, coming back up and testing it. I really wanna see how McDonald's finishes today and I wanna see how these restaurants finish today. What we don't want to see is a long tail to the upside where it was having a good day in the morning and then by the end of the day, back down near the lows. That would not be a very good look on the chart. So something to keep in mind as we go forward. Okay, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to just give a shout out to Dave Keller. Thank him for coming in yesterday. He uh, took Market Watchers Live solo. Today, it's my turn. I'm going solo today. Uh, so you got me for the next hour or so. We'll take a look at a lot of different things in the market. I do want to mention uh, as part of the fall lineup that will be coming here in just two weeks to Stock Charts TV, I will be doing a show trading places live, um, basically bringing my blog to life. I've always wanted to do a morning show. I really like doing the, the pre-market shows because there's so much news, especially in earnings season, so many charts to look at to take a look at where pre-market action is, see what the key resistance support levels. I think that's going to be a real dynamic show that I hope uh, everyone will tune in. That's going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, beginning two weeks from today, October 1st. So really looking forward to it. I'm going to have my uh, sidekick, Zach, who has been working with me here on Market Watchers Live. Zach, I'm looking forward to our new show. And I, I want to point out to everybody that when I do a, a show at 9 a.m., it is 6 a.m. out in Seattle where Zach has agreed to uh, come in and help me with the show. So you're going to be getting up pretty early, my friend. Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely not sunny here in Seattle. It's a lot less sunny here at 6 a.m. slash 5 a.m. when I'm going to be here. So. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. The show is starting at 9 a.m., but that doesn't mean you walk in at 9 a.m. or nope, 6 a.m. out there. You're going to be getting in quite a bit earlier. So, yeah, if uh, I'm here after five, I'm late. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, I really enjoy the mornings. I just think that there's a lot of news to go over. You got economic reports, you got earnings reports, not only from the morning, but from the prior day after the close. You've got recaps, you know, where did the market finish? I mean, the one disadvantage of doing a show like Market Watchers Live is that we talk about things intraday. And I was just talking about the restaurants and McDonald's and yeah, it looks good right now, but where's it going to close? Well, when we start doing the morning show, we'll know where it closed the prior day. So I think we're going to have a lot of great information for everyone. Hopefully you will uh, tune in and join Zach and me on Tuesdays and Thursdays beginning on October 1st. Again, that is two weeks from today. Really looking forward to it. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we do have uh, uh, the agenda here I wanted to share uh, along with the schedule, upcoming schedule. Now, uh, Dave Keller is going to be back tomorrow and he's got a host, Dave Landry, and he talked about that a little bit yesterday. I know he was really looking forward to uh, having Dave on his show. Uh, so make sure you check that out tomorrow. Then Julius will be back in here on Thursday joining me. And then next week, Grayson Rose will be joining Dave Keller. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Great guests. And today, the, today's agenda. Well, I'm going to do a workshop scanning my favorite chart list. And I know if you all have been listening to me for a while, you know I like a strong earnings chart list that I um, continue to update and organize. And I'm going to show you how I run scans against it today. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. Um, and then later in the show, we'll get into the 10 in 10, First Stock, Hershey Foods Corp. Um, see what you think of that chart. It's been all over the place. Started having a really good day today, or at least it was, uh, but it had been under a lot of pressure. I got my thoughts. We'll see if they match yours uh, as that uh, first 10 in 10 stock is unveiled at 1245 this afternoon. All right, um, let's go ahead and jump into the economic news. Uh, Zach, I know we got the Fed meeting. I tell you what, this is this is the topic for today's poll, by the way, and I'm going to talk about the poll at the end of the show. But go in there and, in the po in the poll and answer the question about what you think the, how the market's going to react to the Fed uh, between today and tomorrow. They've got their two day meeting, and then tomorrow, two p.m., their policy uh, statement comes out, and it has been fireworks. If you go back and you look at the last three big moves down in U.S. equities. Now, one, it already started. We know the fourth quarter was weak, but after the Fed reported or once the Fed gave their policy statement, I think it was December 19th and 20th, the next four or five days after that announcement, that's when we went down and literally we were free falling after the Fed came out. I don't know if you recall, but they said not only uh, were they raising, but they were talking about raising rates four times, three or four times in 2019. And the bond market had the yields had been tumbling. So everyone's like, what? Why are you looking at raising rates in 2019? The bond market is screaming for a rate cut. And so the Fed stuck to their guns. They stayed uh, very hawkish and the market didn't like it. And they sent a message back in December on that huge tumble. Then uh, come, I think it was late April, uh, maybe the 29th and 30th, or maybe it was April 30th, May 1st, they came out and... Uh, I think the market was at that point looking for a rate cut and you know inflation was not a problem. In fact, if anything, maybe disinflation was becoming a little bit more of a worry. And if you recall, the Fed announced they weren't doing anything with interest rates and they thought that the drop in the inflation rate was transitory. That was the big word, transitory, meaning that it wasn't going to last. Well, anybody who looks at the dollar index and sees it on an eight-year uptrend and you see commodity prices on an eight-year downtrend, uh, I'm not sure I would call that transitory. But uh, I think that the, the door was open to the Fed to, to lower rates, which is what other central bankers were doing around the globe, and they failed to do it. Not only did they fail to do it, but they went and said, we just think it's temporary. We're not considering lowering rates. And that, was, that led to the May swoon. And then you go further out, and uh, I don't know, it's just I could get into this talk about it all day, but Anyway, Fed meeting today. Check out that poll. We'll talk about it later. August industrial production, um, capacity utilization, both came in above expectations. Housing market strong, 68 versus 66. Taking a look at that 10-year Treasury yield, well, it is down today. And part of this may be in anticipation of the Fed, money rotating back into 
the more defensive treasury area. This is a chart showing the downtrend. We came up, actually pierced it with this move, but there's a lot of overhead resistance here between 1.85% and 1.95%. Could not get up to the, to the upper end of it. Seems like we're rolling over. I think after the Fed, I really want to watch that uh, 20 day moving average and see if that holds. So that will be something to keep an eye on. Earnings reports. We had a couple of them out um, last night. Cracker Barrel came out. Uh, they came in with better than expected results. Apogee Enterprises, also same thing. Um, after the bell today, Adobe, FedEx, Chewy, all will be reporting. Let's take a look at the chart on Cracker Barrel. So Cracker Barrel beat on their bottom line. You can see they're part of the restaurant group, which has been strong, starting to roll over a little bit. This is what I was talking about just a couple of minutes ago. I'll point out a couple of things we want to watch for there in a minute. But Cracker Barrel's been on a downtrend. So if we can't make this breakout and we got up, you know, got some overhead resistance between, say, about 176, 177, we got as high as 175, backed off of it, now back down to 167. This is not one of the better stocks in the restaurant space. So I think there are others to consider. Shake Shack, uh, I think, is one that I would consider. And then the other one is um, Chipotle. Both of those, I think, look much, much stronger than Cracker Barrel. All right, let's take a look at, I'm going to pull up a chart here on the restaurant group because uh, I want to just take a look and see what's going on. You can see this breakdown. Actually, when we pulled back, we held this prior low down here around 1990 to 2000, uh, not closing below 2000 until the last two days. Today, we're moving back up above it, but I don't want to see a tail left up there and move back down and close at the low today. That would not be a good look on this chart in the near term. You can see the, the uh, daily PPO is broken down. I would ju I'm just growing a little bit more cautious. If I was in restaurants, again, I would stick with those best of breed stocks, um, Chipotle and uh, Shake Shack too, that I would certainly consider. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here today? Um, well, let's go ahead and move into the scooter mover. Um, on the list over here, you can see MTDR, Matador. Um, you can see the scooter's down almost 30 points today. Wanted to bring this chart up because this is a stock that had moved up. Uh, it's moved up on a few occasions, and we've seen relative strength pick up. I wanted to circle this where we've seen the peer, its peers start to strengthen just like we're seeing now relative to the S&P 500, only to move back to a lower uh, move. The other thing I would watch on an individual basis on Matador is when it moves up, when it comes back down and loses that 20-day moving average, that's when that's kind of a signal to be careful. In September, we moved through and we held the 20-day moving average and so far moved up to a new high. I don't think Matador is out of the woods, but this is certainly a stock that I would be paying very, very close attention to. If it loses that 20-day moving average, I would be looking for the exit. So that, uh, for that reason alone, uh, Matador is your scooter mover of the day. All right, I want to get into a couple of upgrades and downgrades. <clears throat> so let's first take a look at Splunk. And Splunk, uh, you know, other than having a really crazy name, which I kind of like, um, it's in the software space, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up a relative chart so that you can take a look at that. So here you can see the chart. We did hold on to support uh, back from early June, um, but the stock is being upgraded or was upgraded today, got through the 20-day, so that's a good sign. Uh, that's the first step is getting back through that 20-day now that support is held, but you've got a wide trading range here. I'm going to say 144 at the top all the way down to these lows around 107 or so. The huge volume, you might look at that and say, well, that's really bearish. Well, except that we didn't lose price support. So I'm not re ready to throw the towel in here just yet on Splunk. Now, it hasn't been one of the better performers. So if it did lose that price support, I would be out of it. That would be my line in the sand down around that 107 level. All right, Snap. Um, and Snap was also upgraded today. Taking a look, I do like this move back to the upside. We've been failing lately around 1675. Right now we're at 1650. Beautiful volume trends back in July on the move up. Notice the hammer that was printed about a week ago, right at gap support. 
from that earnings announcement. I love when a stock comes down, holds that gap, support starts to turn back up again. A break above 17, I think, would really be bullish, likely send us back up to test that July high. And you can see relative to its peers in internets, Snap's been a great performer. Another upgrade, TJX. Uh, you can see TJX making a slight breakout, pulling back, really needs to hold that 20-day moving average. I'll give you one of these downgrades that came in today, Raytheon. I think sometimes downgrades are an opportunity. Raytheon is beginning to strengthen within the defense group, and the defense group has been a very strong area in the market. So a lot of times you get these valuation downgrades, and a stock pulls back, but it's only temporary before you make another run to the upside. Watch that 20-day moving average. I think that is going to be a critical area here. All right, uh, let me give you a summary of the upgrades and downgrades. There were a couple of other downgrades, including Home Depot. Um, you can see those on your screen. Uh, I'm going to do a workshop when we get back, but first, let's find out a little bit about that uh, fall lineup coming up. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I think you can see we got a pretty exciting fall lineup scheduled. Again, this starts just in a couple of weeks. Dave Keller, who you listened to yesterday, he'll be back on here again tomorrow with Dave Landry. Uh, Dave will have his own show. Dave Keller will have his own show uh, at 4 o'clock Eastern, right after the market closes, final bar. That will be the introduction of the new shows. It start, that starts on September 30th. It is uh, Monday. Um, and then again, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I'll be doing a uh, Trading Places live show from 9 to 9.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So please make sure you check that out. Zach and I will have all kinds of good stuff for you. All right, uh, let's get into the workshop for today. Um, this is scanning my favorite chart list. And the first thing I do um, when I'm thinking about scanning, I, I, well, I'm always thinking about scanning my chart list because I trade almost exclusively. And I would say, I can't even remember the last time I placed a trade now outside of my chart list, but usually it doesn't result in very good um, in very good trades. So I tend to stick with what works best for me. Uh, being a CPA, uh, I really believe that fundamentals play a big part in this as well. I think that management needs to be trusted. And so I like companies that beat uh, Wall Street estimates as to both revenues and earnings per share. Um, it's, just a, it's just confirmation of a company executing its plan. And so I think that that gives you a little bit more confidence. At least it gives me a little bit more confidence in the trade, knowing that I've got a company that's executing fundamentally. And then also I like the charts or I wouldn't put it in the chart list. So that's how, that's kind of the basics. When I say my, my strong earnings chart list, or I like to run scans against my favorite chart list, that's it. The strong earnings chart list. Right now I have 329 stocks on that list continually updates, especially as we get into earnings season, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of new reports coming out. Uh, companies that were uh, fan favorites last quarter sometimes can't catch a bid in the next quarter. Um, if they can't meet their estimates or if they can't beat their estimates or if they lower guidance, or maybe it's just their industry group that's falling apart. Uh, there's a whole host of reasons. I don't trade, for the most part, I don't trade energy companies, material companies, because those two areas have been underperforming the market for so long. But when I think about the scan, I want to run um, every day. And there are a couple I run every day. But I, I, I'm going to use an analogy, um, a football coach. You know, if you're in the NFL and you're, you got a, a third and 20 play, um, you're not going to pick the same play on third and 20 that you would on third and one. Third and one gives you lots of different options. Third and 20 if you really want to pick up that first down, you're going to go back and you're going to heave it. You got to throw something down the field. Well, the stock market's kind of similar. I mean, if you've got a market that has been down for 
six, seven days in a row. Maybe it's in an uptrend overall, but it's been pulling back. Probably is not a whole lot of point in running a 52 week high um, scan against a chart list because if the overall market's been coming down for seven or eight straight days, probably you're not getting too many companies that are making breakouts. Instead, I would be thinking about some kind of a pullback scan that I, that I have. So maybe uh, wanting to scan the, the RSI being back in a certain range, 40 to 50, 40 to 45, something like that. Because many times in uptrends, when you do get pullbacks, uh, some of the leading stocks, if you can get them with their RSIs back in that 40 to 45, maybe even up to 50 area, a lot of times that marks bottoms. Um, if, you, if you've ever studied long-term uptrends, and I know uh, Dave Keller's talked about this. I know Arthur Hill's talked about it. These are trend-following um, indicators. They're momentum oscillators. The RSI is a momentum oscillator. But, and, and everyone talks about 30 being oversold, 70 being overbought. But when you're in an uptrend, you rarely go back to 30. A lot of times when you get those pullbacks, you only go back to about 40. So the first thing you have to do when you think about scanning is think about the, the type of scan you want to run. Now, we're fairly close to all-time highs. I think the 52-week high scan is fine. So I keep uh, a couple of scans uh, that I've saved. And so I could go ahead and pull one up here. Let's go ahead and start with this, this SECL 52-week high scan that I've saved. Strong earnings chart list, SECL 52-week highs. So all I have to do is pull that up, and I'll edit it just so you can see what it is. But essentially, it is checking to see whether or not the daily high exceeded yesterday's daily max for over the last 253 days. And then my favorites list, which is my strong earnings chart list. I mean, it's got these other volume uh, things in here. I could probably take that out. I don't really need that. But it's not going to hurt because I know that that 40,000 volume is not going to be a problem with the, the stocks that I have in my list. So um, I'm just going to run the scan. And when I run this scan, it's showing me that there were nine stocks of my 329 stocks on the list. Nine of them are setting 52-week highs. So I can sort them. Now, if they're, sort of, if they're setting 52-week high, chances are the scooter is going to be pretty strong. And you can see the scooter, the lowest one is 78. The other thing I like to do sometimes is look at the industry and see where is the breakout occurring. Transportation services, semiconductors, love the semiconductors. Home construction. Home construction has been in an uptrend for quite some time. So if I'm getting a breakout there, I want to know about it. I want to know which stock it is. I want to know if it's a, you know, a, a breakout that's tradable or maybe we're just so overbought. It's not, you know, maybe it's been making 52-week highs for a while. Life insurance, that's come to life a little bit, uh, no pun intended, um, of late with the 10-year treasury yield moving to the upside. But it's kind of interesting with the yields moving down the last couple of days that this life insurance company is setting a new 52-week high. Maybe it's a topping kind of a candle. It could have doesn't mean that we're at 52-week highs right now. It just means that we hit a 52-week high at some point during the day. So it could be a reversal. Um, Meritage Homes, home construction again. Lockheed Martin, love these defense stocks. Uh, electronic equipment, media agencies. And there's a restaurant and bar with only a 78 scooter. That kind of makes me wonder too. If, if the scooter is only 78, that kind of tells me maybe the stock hasn't been, isn't overbought. Um, is it? I don't know. Let's pull up a chart and see. A uh, lot of sideways consolidation. Big move up. I see a cup. I see a handle. Now we have a false breakout. I would not be jumping in right at this level, 89.79. But later in the day, if the volume, you see the volume really start to pick up. I don't like that light volume today either. We're already, we're getting close to the halfway point of the day and only 124,000 shares on a false breakout. It tells me maybe we're, this is not going to, not going to do it. If it's going to do it and I'm, and I'm going to trade it, I need to see more volume coming in. And I want to see that definitive breakout above 90 on the close. The measurement from 90 down to the bottom of the cup, around 84, that would be a target of 96. So looking at a stock like this, I would say, okay, if I'm buying it on the breakout, let's say I get in at 90 and a half, 91, I would probably only buy half of it um, because I'm not a big fan of these breakouts. Sometimes, like I said, they're false breakouts. Maybe we get one more test of the 20-day moving average. But if we get the breakout and the volume is heavy, I think even if the breakout doesn't hold, 
is probably going to hold when it gets down to the 20 day moving average. So buying half on a breakout allows me the opportunity to maybe buy the other half down around 87 if it gets there. My target would then be my measurement, 96. So if I got in at 91 and I get in at 87, that would be an average of 89. I could probably have about a $2 risk to the downside, $7 to the upside to 96 from an average entry of 89. That would be three and a half to one reward to risk. I'll take those just about every day. But again, jack in the box. The reason that this even comes up is number one, I know they beat their um, revenue and earnings estimates. That was the gap up here back in August. That was the huge rally on heavy volume. So I don't like chasing. Stock went up for the next few days. You can see it pulled all the way back down. 20-day test is usually a good ent entry opportunity. And I would say the gap up right here to 83 would be another uh, possible entry. Never quite got back down there. But from even the 20-day moving average, you can see you got about $6 out of it, put in the right side of that cup, and now we're just consolidating. But Jack in the Box is one that I think looks pretty interesting based on the um, – the scan and having picked up the stock, just taking a look at it. All right, others, I want to pull up KLA. KLA uh, is one of the stocks in my uh, portfolios over at Earnings Beats. I think KLA is a, one of the strongest um, semiconductor stocks right now. I'm not sure I like this false breakout. It was up over, and I want to say that the intraday high is probably, uh, because it's on the list, had to have cleared that. That was 155.33. Today, we got to 155.78. So remember, I was saying on these 52-week highs, you can get these false breakouts, intraday moves, and then false breakouts where we pull back. KLA, depending on how we close. Now, if we can close strong, get back up over 155 on the close, I'm going to be very bullish. Even if we don't, I'm still going to be bullish. I'm just not going to be as bullish in the near term. Um, anytime I get a false breakout, look at what, uh, look what happened here. KLA gets this big move up, just like we saw recently, pulls back, well, pulls back here for four or five days. Look at this move up. Look like it was making a breakout, big volume, and look at how it finished, and look what happened the next two days. So the sellers came in once they saw the failure. Uh, buyers, all the buying kind of dried up. Sellers took control, and we sideways consolidated and then made a breakout. So if we fail and we have something similar to this, then I would think maybe in the short term, especially if the Fed comes out and disappoints, we could be seeing a short term top on KLA Corp. But I would suspect any kind of a move back into the mid 140s would be a great entry opportunity for the stock. All right. So those were two. Um, Copart. Let's pull up Copart because I think this one was also uh, it's very, very high on the scooter. Look at the volume here and look at the that was earnings related. It was trading down initially after earnings and but by the end of the day look at that huge reversal from 73 and change up over 80 on one of the strongest volume days of the year barely has pulled back and now we're upsetting a new high again mac or excuse me the uh, ppo looks great here i think after having a negative divergence that you can see here higher prices lower ppo i think we went back reset and i think we're starting a new move to the upside and on great volume the stock looks good. Now, would I trade it here? Probably not because it's a little extended. What I always think about is, okay, where am I going to get out? If I get in at this price, 83 and a quarter, where would I get out? And my answer would probably be a move below the 20-day moving average of close. Well, that's down to 79. I'd have to give up 5%. So the only reason that I would consider giving up 5% to the downside is if there was something telling me that I was going to make at least 10% to the upside. And I don't really have anything in play here that's telling me pattern-wise that I'm going to be up to $90, you know, $93 um, anytime soon. Might happen. Uh, chart looks good. But again, I would rather wait and see. I've got 329 stocks on my list. I don't have to jump in on every one that comes up on a scan. Um, so I can still be very selective. I think, again, the chart looks great. But I think this is an, an opportunity maybe just to look for something that, that uh, potentially could be a little bit better. Okay, uh, last one I'm going to look at off of this list is Pulte, PHM, home construction, um, straight up. Um, you know, it's been a great performer. Let's look at the relative chart. If I pull that up, you can see relative to home construction, it went through a period of some profit taking. It had a big 
drop back in uh, the third week of July. That was earnings related, but it held its price support. Remember, I was showing you a chart earlier, big drop, heavy volume, but it held support and then continued. Now you can see here on Pulte, it continues going higher. So it's the combination of price and volume that gets me. It's not just the fact we're down on big volume. Did we lose major support? And I would say in this case, no, we didn't. We held it, and then we rallied back to the upside, set new highs, and I think Pulte continues to look pretty good on the chart. All right, um, let's move on to another scan. So let's go back, and I'm going to pull up... <clears throat> Let's take a look. So I, I just did the 52 week high, but the market's really not soaring here. Um, we've pulled back a little bit the last couple of days. Wonder if there's any, um, any, any of the stocks on this list maybe that have pulled back with an RSI. I actually think the scan is 40 to 45, but let's edit, edit it, check it out. Yeah, it's the, my, the RSI has to be greater than 40 and it, and it has to be lower than 45. So I probably started at some point, did 50, and then changed it. Um, 40 to 45, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this scan. Again, it's against my strong earnings chart list. So it's just telling me all these companies that have beaten top and bottom lines. I like the charts. Here's a list of the ones that have an RSI between 40 and 45. 33 of them. So 33 out of 329, so roughly 10%. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just replace an existing chart list and I'll go through scan results. I have a scan results RSI 40 to 50 already set up. And then I could just go through 10 uh, per page if I wanted to. So you've got uh, APPN coming down to a really key area of support. You can see the big volume gap up around 45. It's getting a 50 day test. Avalara, this is one that I really liked uh, Monday setup, I think actually from last week. It did not hold the 75 level, which is where I wanted it to hold. So I would have been stopped out if I had traded that one. Um, just going through real quick to see if there's anything that looks good. Oh, here's 50. I mean, if we got a hammer or something on this one, CLGX, let's see uh, the stock relative to its peers. Um, business services. Yeah, it's not, it was showing some relative strength and has now pulled back. I mean, if it put the hammer in right on the 50-day moving average, that would probably be right on this trend line. It's one that I would certainly keep on my radar. Um, and again, we go back up and close above about 46 and a quarter, 46 and a half, something like that today. Then I could get in, put today's low in as a stop, an intraday stop, and only be risking maybe one and a half percent. Um, and to the upside, I'd be looking maybe for a $3 reversal, which would maybe be about 7%. So 7% upside versus 1.5% downside, 4 to 1, almost 5 to 1. Again, uh, that's going to get my attention. All right, uh, let's take a look here. Oh, that was the... Um, Uh, well, let's see. These are the ones that were on this scan, and you can see. Um, and, and if ever you don't see the column you want, by the way, like I'm looking for scooter, don't see it. Sometimes you just go up here and you have to click on that. Also, um, industry group I like, and scooter and market cap. I can put them all on here. All right. So now I can take a look and look at uh, Enphase Energy up uh, 1.79%. I was just talking about this one, I think, yesterday. Um, the stock, I actually liked it coming down here, finally filling that gap support. I think it was Snap that I was showing you earlier. Let me pull that chart up again, just so I can, as a reminder. See how we gapped up? This took a month and a half, two months really, uh, to come all the way back down and test this gap support, printed a hammer, and now look at it beginning to strengthen. Now let's go back and look at Enphase. Talked about the fact that renewable energy was having such a big day. Well, this was one of the leaders. Now, I'm not saying it's going to soar back up again. I think getting back up through those two moving averages are going to be critical because we came down on heavy volume. Some of that's probably just the pain inflicted. Anybody buying the stock back up in the mid-30s, probably not very happy two or three weeks later when it's down around 21, 22. So you're going to get a lot of panic on the way down. But it did hold gap support with its earnings. That was a huge earnings announcement and it's starting to recover again. Right now for me, this stock I would be watching very closely. 
2165, I believe, is that gap support. Let me see if that's the right number. 2165. So 2165, I'd watch to the downside and look at both of these moving averages. They are a nickel apart, 2640 and 2645. That's the trading range for me right now on end phase. All right, let's see any others that maybe are in here that uh, might catch my attention. Uh, also looking at some of the uh, industry groups here. All right, HEI, and remember all these stocks are stocks that just hit their, uh, hit that RSI 40 to 45. All right, so let's pull up HEI. And you can see now RSI has actually gone down. It went down into oversold territories, come back up. That's a little different. That's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stocks that have been overbought and are coming down into the 40s. So this one's gotten beaten up on some very heavy volume. I'd be actually pretty careful from about 132 up to 135 on HEI. Um, and I would want to make sure I get through that 135 level, get through that 20 week, or excuse me, 20 day moving average. Something to uh, to be watching for there. And then maybe do one more and then I'll show you one other scan that I run. Um, I mentioned, I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but Waste and Disposal Services has been a group that's been leading in 2019, but it has been rough the last couple of weeks. Well, Waste Management is on the list and moving higher. Let's see what's going on here. Here we are down just a little bit below 40 and turning back up again. I even though waste management's been getting hit on some heavier volume, I'm going to annotate. There's one thing I do like about um, waste management, and that is the breakout that we saw on huge volume back here in late May, early June. We've never gone back and tested that. We got close. So if I was looking at this recent low, we went below that. And the volume was pretty big, but we haven't gone back and filled, or not filled, but gone back and tested a prior breakout level. So I would be thinking that somewhere down in this range, I wouldn't be surprised to see waste management begin to get uh, some love. Um, at the top, you can see that bearish engulfing candle. Anytime you're on an uptrend, you see that, at least in the short term, you should be thinking probably going to be uh, moving lower, especially when you've got an uptrend that was you know six, seven days long. All right, so that's another scan. Let's go back and... Um, Take a look at one more scan. And this scan is, this scan is gonna be a high volume, intraday high volume scan that I like to run. And so let's edit this one, just take a look at what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the daily volume today for all the stocks in my strong earnings chart list again, that's a global filter down here. Strong earnings chart list, that's the only thing that the scan engine is running against, my strong earnings uh, chart list. So the daily volume for today is greater than the 90-day simple moving average of volume times 0.4. So let's say that a stock normally over the last 90 days has averaged doing a million shares a day. Well, I usually run this one at 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m., if I've got a stock that's already done 40% of that or 400,000 shares, that is on a pace to go way beyond the million for the day. And so early in the trading day, maybe there's no news. Maybe it's just a stock that's doing something technically that I want to be aware of. Well, one way to find out is to see unusual volume. And it could be the either way. It could be the upside or it could be the downside. So let's take a look at this now. It's 0.4. We're halfway through the day. If I run this, well, let's just run it so you can see. But I'm going to get about, you know, probably 150 stocks on this list. 109. All right. That's too many. That's not really what I'm trying to do here. So let's go back over here and let's change this. And what if a stock is already done 1.2? I mean, here we are at the halfway point of the day. Let's say it's already gone. It's 120% of normal volume already today. So we're going to update our criteria. We're going to run the scan. And there's four of them on the list. Now, I could go back and change it, maybe go to one times. Maybe I'd get eight or nine of them. We already looked at, uh, actually, we didn't look at DR Horton. I actually put that in a um, 
uh, daily market report for Earnings Beats members. And I'll show that to you in just a minute, too. Um, if you like the scans and you like these results that I'm coming up with, I want to show you something. Okay, so DH Horton, or excuse me, DR Horton, DHI, coming down. This has been a key area of support on the stock right around the 20 day moving average, also right around this price support area, 48 and a half to 49. Today's low was 49.04. I think that's in a great group. If we pull up the uh, relative chart, you will see that the stock overall has the group's been trending higher versus the S&P. The stock's been trending higher versus both the S&P and versus the home construction group. It's been consolidating here in September. A lot of times that's just an opportunity. The group's been moving up, but after the huge advance DR Horton had, you can see the outperformance. It outperformed its home construction peers. It simply went sideways here for a little while. And while it was consolidating, it was losing relative strength. Well, stock can't go up all the time. It's going to you know, pull back from time to time. But I think DR Horton could be poised for another big push to the upside as it has been one of the stronger home construction stocks over the past few months. Um, now, let me. I want to show you where you can go for the next couple of days because I am posting um, the daily market report that I'm doing. If you go into the About Us right now, it's just in this section. I uh, just want to post a daily market report sample. So here is the sample of what I uh, sent out to Earnings Beats members today. And if you ever, if you followed my Trading Places blog. Um, and you saw all of the uh, market analysis that I did and a lot of the individual charts that I would post in there, the Monday setups, uh, all of those different things. You want to um, just keep in mind that over at uh, Earnings Beats, that's what I'm posting really on steroids. Um, if, as you go through this, here's the market overview, talking about what's been going on with crude oil, um, the 10-year treasury yield moving up. I do a sector industry focus here. This was home construction I talked about today, and I mentioned Meritage, which was one of the um, home construction stocks that I like, and you can see the, the relative strength there and the way the stock's been trading. Um, strong earnings chart list, this is what I was showing. Scan, the scans I'm showing you right now, I put in the, the uh, daily market report every day. So here was high volume stocks, I actually sent this out. You can see I ran the scan at 1020, already doing 40% of the normal volume as of 1015, and there's six stocks came back. Uh, DR Horton was one of them. And you can see the stocks that are really making noise in terms of volume. Uh, here was the DR Horton chart, just what I was just showing you. I posted here in this blog. Here's Funko making a big uh, move to the upside, but Funko um, pulling back after announcing a secondary offering. Uh, that is one of the least favorite. Uh, phrases I, I hear as a short-term trader on the long side. I do not like secondary offerings because they generally mean dilution and immediate drops in the, in your stock if you're holding it. Uh, let's see. Then I've got current alerts. So the, those are just alerts that we have out to members. Um, today's mover. So this is not on the strong earnings chart list. I don't trade off of the strong earnings chart list, but I know a number of our members do. And energy was kind of in the spotlight yesterday. And so I just was wanted to point out that Schlumberger had been having a huge move the last two or three weeks and was, you know, energy was getting a lot of write up, but we can't lose focus on the big chart, the big picture. And here you can see Schlumberger pulling back. So anyhow, just wanted to point that out. You can go back in and take a look at that. If you go to earningsbeats.com, click on about us and go down to the daily market report sample. I'm going to be posting these the rest of this week. So this is the first week that I'm doing these over at earnings beats. I just want, uh, Folks that have followed me at Stock Charts to also have an opportunity to see exactly what it is that I, I do over there in terms of these uh, market reports. All right, last thing I want to do before we pull up the summary is I just want to go back and show you very quickly how you can go to the uh, predefined scans. If I can get back to it, there we go. All right, so on the predefined scan down here, if you click on that, you can pull up any of these um, scans, these predefined scans. Um, and so let's say I'm looking for something that's got a bunch of them. All right, bearish engulfing. So 145 bearish engulfing. I could pull that up and I could then click here to edit the scan 
and I could go down below and add my chart list. So here, let me go in here and put that strong earnings chart list in here. And it'll tell me if any of my stocks are showing a bearish engulfing candle. So I add that and you can see there it is, it's been added. I'll just check syntax, make sure we're good, we're good. And I run the scan and none. So right now I don't have any of them showing a bearish engulfing candle, but hopefully you can get the point. Use a predefined scan, click on the uh, details of that scan, and then just add your chart list against. It's very easy to set up these scans, even if you don't understand how to set up scans. All right, uh, that is it for the chart list. Uh, you can see it on the screen right there in front of you. Some of the things that I do, um, and uh, we looked at a bunch of individual stocks. So I hope you enjoyed that workshop. Uh, I'm going to be back in just a minute, but first, uh, here's a little sneak preview of the Trading Places Live opening that you'll see in a couple weeks. Okay, welcome back everybody. Hopefully you all are as excited for Trading Places Live going forward as I am. Uh, really looking forward to doing the morning show. It's gonna be a lot of information packed in a 30 minute show, so please tune in. It's a great time right before the market opens. I'll try to get you up to date on everything that's happening in the market before it opens. Uh, really look forward to you uh, joining the show. And it is gonna be somewhat interactive. If you have any comments that you'd like to send me, um, you can still do so by sending to Tom B at stockcharts.com. Feel free. Um, you know, just let me know you've got some suggestions, or maybe there's some things you really like for Market Watchers Live that you'd like for me to carry over into that particular show. Just keep in mind it's only going to be twice a week and it's only a 30 minute show. So can't spend a whole lot of time on long segments, but uh, it's going to be very interactive. Try to be very interactive. Okay, let's get into this 10 in 10. First stock is Hershey Corp. I told you, uh, you know, I've got my opinions about this one. Let's see if it matches yours. Uh, first of all, the group is breaking out, the food products group. I like that. Um, Hershey's has been a tremendous performer relative to the food products group. Yes, we pulled back. Yes, it doesn't look that great volume, but I don't think we've lost any major support. I mean, yeah, maybe the, the prior low here in August and the 50-day moving average, but you know, you're going to occasionally move below the 50 day. I think we're coming right back up. The first test, can we get through that 20 day moving average? I think eventually we will get through. I don't know if we'll get through on the first uh, go round, but you can see volume already, not light, uh, moving up. If we can get through that 20 day moving average, that would be bullish. I do like this stock. I have not seen any relative strength uh, lost. And if the food products group can come up and move to about an eight month relative high. It's not that far away and we're starting to see some strength. That could even add to the bullishness in Hershey. So I like the stock. I don't know that I'd be jumping in after the stock's up 3.5% one day. I'd either have to see that breakout or maybe a pullback down to that uh, recent low around 147 or so. What's up next, uh, Zach? Actually, it's Rachel today. Oh, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. What you okay. got for me? Well, right now we have TAN, Invesco Solar. All right. I can put that on a different chart because it's not going to, the relative chart's not going to work out. Uh, yeah, I was talking about renewable energy earlier, and I think that uh, beautiful hammer printed here on the chart just a little over a week ago. And so when I see something like this, I mean, there was a pretty big support level. Here was a support level. These are those, those two prior lows. And when I see a hammer like this, it looked like we were going to break down. And instead, we reversed and finished on the high of the day. That is usually a really good sign off of a downtrend. At least it, 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 there's no guarantees. But what that does for me is it limits my downside because I'm near support. If I go below this low, this is a hammer. This is a reversing candle. If I go below the low, it negates it. So I can keep a very tight stop. And in the meantime, I'm looking for a reversal now back to test these highs. And the reason that I'm looking to test the highs is I'm in an uptrend. I'm not looking for a breakdown. I'm in a bull market. I'm in an, a, a group that's been leading the market to the upside. I think this tan looks really good. The problem I have now 
is we're getting close to resistance. So I'm not going to jump in at 31.21 after we've made this big move off of the recent low. I like the chart. I think you either need to wait for the breakout or at least wait for a pullback back to the 20-day moving average. Okay, next up is IOTS, Adesto Technologies. IOTS. <clears throat> All right, I'll go back to that relative chart. Yeah, this one looks good. Uh, great volume trends. I think I looked at this one not too long ago. Really good uh, stock within the semi space. So when I look at uh, a stock, a potential stock to invest in, one of the things I really look for is a stock that's in a group that's leading the S&P, a stock that's leading the S&P, a stock that's leading its peer group, and the peer group obviously moving higher on, a, on an absolute basis, and clearly the stock being in an uptrend. So all of those things, check, 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 check. The problem is the stock is somewhat overbought. It's a little bit extended. I think I would probably be looking at least waiting for a 20-day test. You can see that held beautifully uh, to open September. We did it. We tested it also in the middle part of August. So a lot of good volume trends. I would just want to get a little bit closer maybe to that 20-day moving average. Okay, next up is TWLO, Twilio, Inc. All right, Twilio, I tell you, many of these software stocks have just lost a little bit of their luster. Uh, this one, I think, maybe lost a lot of its luster. Uh, gap down on heavy volume, went back, filled the gap, couldn't get through, and then broke down again. That is not a good look. Um, now, this is one that gapped down on heavy volume, and if it had held, I would have said, hey, this one still looks good. So right here, see all these uh, lows coming across here? See how we come down on this big volume, move all the way down to test it. We start to rise back up, but we also have this gap resistance up at the top. And so we're stuck in this range between top of gap and then price support to the downside. Well, look at what happened here. On the ninth, we broke down on very heavy volume. And now we've got a 20-day uh, that is sitting at price support right up near 120. Could we move back to 119, 120 in the short term? Yes. Uh, would I bank on it? No. I would be looking for something else in the software area. I think Twilio at this point, until it shows us differently, I would treat this as a broken stock. I would be avoiding it. Okay, next up is an energy stock, RIG, TransOcean. All right, yeah, energy, yes, things have improved, no doubt about it. Uh, we've seen this before. We've seen moves to the upside before. We're still not seeing relative strength or not much of it. When we look back over the last year, uh, Riggs peers versus the S&P 500, that is probably one of the most important things on this chart is that, yeah, we'll go through periods where we, here, look at this back at the beginning of 2019, look like, yeah, we're here we go, we're going to the upside. And next thing you know, we're just putting in more lows. So yeah, it looks good in the near term, but when you've got a downtrending stock and you buy it after it rallies, that can be devastating financially. I would be watching for a couple of things here on um, rig. First thing I would do is, uh, first thing I would be looking at, number one, there was your prior price support, and then the reaction high went just above it, right about to there. So I think this 640 to 660 area is pretty big. We went right up to there, turned back around. Now I think what's going to be critical on this stock Forget about everything, you know, relative strength and everything else, which, you know, obviously is a concern. But can we hold that rising 20 day? Are we truly moving up? Volume trends are good. We've had a nice rally. That first test of the 20 day moving average, or maybe the second test, that next one, I think is going to be really important. We need to hold it. Okay. Next up is communication services, E V E R. The company is ever quote. Yeah, ever quote. Um, this one, I was really surprised. We had the big move up yesterday. I didn't see news on it. I still don't haven't seen news. Um, haven't looked since earlier this morning. But the stock had a huge gap down after breaking out to a new high. I was really shocked to see the stock gap down the way it did. But obviously, buyers coming back in again with that red hollow candle. It, you know, it's not the way I want to see a test of a 20 day moving average uh, happen with a wake, you know, waking up to a 10% decline at the open. But it's coming down. It's testing its 20-day moving average. It still remains very strong relative to the internet stocks. So I would, again, just look at the relative strength and know that you've got one of the leaders. Stocks clearly performing well. 
And down here, Everquote versus the S, or excuse me, versus the uh, the uh, internet stocks and versus the S and P 500. Very very strong. I think this one still looks good, even though it did have that scary open today. Okay, next up is KRE S and P Regional Banking ETF. All right, uh, KRE. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the banks with the 10-year Treasury yield rolling over, um, this one's going to be very, very dependent on what the Fed has to say tomorrow. If the Fed comes out and um, it turns decidedly uh, dovish, then I think yields fall, and I think we're going to see banking hit, um, probably at least down to test that rising 20 uh, day moving average. So that is something that I'd probably keep an eye on pretty closely. So I would watch that area right in there. Okay, next up is LHX L3 Harris Technologies. All right, is this the eighth one, Rachel? Yes. All right, uh, LHX, uh, this is in one of my portfolios. I love the stock. Um, just looking at it on a relative basis, um, you can see that the, the relative strength is very strong. I'm not going to go ahead and annotate this just to save some time but you can see sideways consolidation. I believe we're gonna break out. A close above 216 with increasing volume is really what you wanna see. Okay, next up is- Number nine. A. Which one? Number nine, APA, Apache Corp. APA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Apache is another one in the energy space, nice rally. Coming back down today, I, I'm very similar to what I said about rig earlier. Yes, it looks much better now after the big gap up yesterday than it did. Volume's been pretty good. Watch that 20-day moving average. We've gotten a golden cross. We got gap support down around 24 and a quarter. No reason to lose that level. Okay, and final one, HL, Hecla Mining. Yeah, the miners were having a pretty good day. Hecla's not doing very well, but miners were overall doing pretty well earlier today from what I saw. But uh, we got a double top here. We got to get through that. So far, we're trending higher, holding on to the moving averages. I would watch maybe around the 170 level. I don't see any reason why this stock should trade back below 170. To the upside, we got to get through 210. So that's the trading range for now. We're sitting pretty much in the middle of it at this point. And that is your 10 in 10. And there are the symbols that I just covered. Um, I do want to take a look at that poll mentioned a couple times during the show about the Fed. And I uh, just want to see, you know, do you think we're going to have another one of these tumbles? Uh, with the Fed announcement tomorrow, we've seen three of them in the last nine months. Uh, the stock market, very fearful, I think, of, the, of this current Fed. And for good reason. Um, they're not really supporting what the bond and stock market are looking for, which is a much more dovish Fed. We've seen central bankers around the globe very dovish. Uh, the, in the U.S., not nearly as much, although they have come around from where they were back in December of last year. Um, so 45% of you saying strap on your seatbelts. I hope those 45% are wrong. I hope it's more of uh, we move to record highs. That the Fed is not wrong, wrong, Tom. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is that? I said they're not wrong, Tom. They're not wrong? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I don't want to see it. We're sitting right up here near the 52-week high, the all-time highs on the S&P 500. If, they, you know, if, they, if whatever they come out with is supported by the, the, the market, we could see a big rally. Uh, to all-time highs that could lead a really nice rally into year end. But we know what the opposite holds if uh, the market doesn't like it. And I think because we're right at this all-time high, I think this is going to be really important for the market to see whether or not, uh, you know, whether or not we can, we can make that breakout. All right. Uh, well, I guess that's it. Bringing the show to an end. Uh, I do want to thank all of you for being with me today. Uh, please remember to complete the survey as you exit. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great uh, Tuesday afternoon, everybody. I will be back here on Thursday. Dave Keller will be with you tomorrow, along with Dave Landry. Make sure you check in. Uh, happy trading. <laughs>